Hello everyone and welcome to your 66th Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about some of the new features in auto layout that were introduced in 10.11 which is El Capitan and one of those new features is the NS layout anchor. Now previously if you were to set up constraints using code alone you would have only two options. You had the option of either using the visual format which was rather restrictive in that it didn't really cover all the use cases that you needed for auto layout. So if you couldn't succeed in that, then you kind of had to drop down into the sort of pure auto layout uh, methods, which were like eight you know, parameters long, and you really only created about one constraint with those eight parameters. So it was never really that great in code, um, but Apple's essentially tried to move it closer to what it is like in Interface Builder to set up a layout. So in Interface Builder, it's pretty simple to say that with this given view, I want to pin it from you know the left side to the left side of this view. I want it to be center, um, you know, centered in the container. I want it to be this width and this height. Right? It's pretty easy to actually set it up now in Interface Builder, but not so much in the code. So anyway, that is the improvement that we're sort of going to be talking about today. This isn't all the new features necessarily, but it is the majority of the interesting ones anyway. But if you want to know more about uh, another one, feel free to let me know. So uh, what we have set up uh, so far, I'll actually just show you the running application that we have here. So um, currently we have uh, this sort of little setup here. And you can see that uh, basically the you know views stretch to fill um, different things. And one of them is center aligned with a slight offset, right? These are just um, sort of a sample of the things that you can do with auto layout purely in code and it's really not as painful as it used to be. So looking back at what I have here I just briefly set up a quick random color class. Feel free to just set up you know if you just want a bunch of red squares you can just really make a bunch of red squares. Um, I just felt like I wanted to make random colors so I did that but um, I think it also kind of helps just differentiate the two. Nonetheless, uh, the simple setup for this, if you want to make your own, right, you uh, make a layer backed view. And then I just set up a random color generation for the background color. Uh, the initialize is just a way of setting up uh, the random number here. So really, uh, if you want to copy this code, go for it. But feel free to just make your own view that just, you know, is one color. And we've done this multiple times in the past, so I'm not going to dwell on how to make that. Again, all this code also on GitHub if you want to copy it from there. Then uh, in the app delegate, I've gone ahead and created a left and right view. And the important thing that you have to remember when you're using auto layout, is, um, when you're adding them manually, is that you have to tell auto layout that the translates auto resizing mask into constraints property needs to be set to false. If this is left as true, which is the default, then you are going to both be adding constraints and when you add a view to the sub view without constraints, it's actually going to automatically set up auto resizing mask constraints for you. So you're going to add auto resizing mask constraints and then you're going to also try to add um, your own constraints and this is going to break your program. So um, just, well, it's going to break your constraints, not necessarily the program. But if you want your constraints to be right, make sure you set uh, the view that you're going to add constraints to to be false for that property. All right, let's talk about the new features. So let's say that I simply want a my left view here. I'm going to pin it to the top, the left, and I'm going to have it be 100 by 100 uh, for the width and height. So what we can do for this is we can just set up an array of constraints, basically. So I'm going to say left constraints, and I'm going to open up an array here. So this array is just going to list all the constraints that I want to apply on the left view. And what I can do is I can simply say left view. And now we have these options to use anchors. So anchors essentially just represent different parts of the view that I might want to set constraints on. So for example, if I want to pin the top of the left view to the top of the window, I could do that. Um, let me go ahead and actually do a guard let here to get the view off of our window. So window.contentView, else return. All right, so that's just going to give me the, the view from the, the content uh, from the window that I have. Then I, so now what I want to do, right, is I want to say left view, let's constrain, constrain the top of the left view, which I can reference by saying top anchor. 
we want to constrain this to be equal to the view dot top anchor. All right. So what this is going to do is say the top of the left view should be constrained equal to the view's top anchor. Right. So the top of the, our left view will be constrained to the top of the window. Uh, for the left view now, I want to say that I want to constrain the left anchor as well. So I'm going to constrain the left side of the left view to the view's left anchor. And now I can also add constraints for the width. So this works the same way. I can have a width anchor. I can constrain it. Um, the neat thing about having the width anchor is I'll actually point this out here while I'm sitting here. So there's different types of um, anchors that you can have. Some of them don't really do anything different. This is an NS layout x axis anchor. The width one though is an NS layout dimension. Uh, again, it's all just a subclass of um, anchors. But the cool thing about layout dimensions is that you can also set constants on them. So if I want to set the the width just to be a particular constant, I can say constrain equal to constant and just pass the value in that I want. So this will constrain the left view to be a width of 100. If I want to do the same for the height now, I'm just going to say the 100 uh, as well for the height. All right, so excellent. Now I have all the constraints for this left view. Now I simply need to say view .add subview left view. And another cool feature that was introduced in uh, 10.11 is the ability to have, um, what am I trying to say, the ability to just simply add constraints to anything. So in previously we had to have a specific view and that view generally had to be the super view of the view that you were adding. So if I was to add constraints for the left view, I actually had to add the constraints to the super view, which in this case is the view, basically the thing that I'm adding uh, the super view for the view that I'm adding. But we no longer have to do this. We can actually say now NS layout constraint activate constraints and now auto layout will figure out where these constraints have to be applied to and it will just do this automatically. So this is great. Now I can just say left constraints and I'm good to go. Now for whatever reason um, this particular parameter expects that um, or for whatever reason the array figures that it's going to be an NS layout constraint uh, explicitly unwrapped. I'm not sure why that is necessarily, but we can just say that this is going to be an array of NS layout constraints, and this will resolve the issue that we have. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now. And we should see that we have our view pinned to the top left. And of course, uh, it's not going to change when we move the window, but we have it we have it set so that the width and height are both 100 points. Let's move on to another view now. So I also have this right view that I've created here, and I'm going to set up constraints for it as well. So I'm just going to change some names here. I'm going to call this right, and I'll just copy this. All right, and now we're going to set up the right view to basically be the same thing, but it's going to be uh, pinned to the bottom right. So we're going to say bottom anchor will be constrained to the view's bottom anchor. The right anchor will be constrained to the view's right anchor. The width can be 100 and the height can be 100 as well. All right, so let's go ahead and add this guy as well. So we'll say right view, oops. And we will also apply the layout constraints for this as well. So we can activate these constraints on the right view, or right constraints rather. There we go, and now this will apply the constraints for this particular view. If I wanted, I could technically put these, you know, all these constraints into one array. I don't have to make two separate arrays, and I could just activate one array of constraints. But I think to separate out for different components is probably better to make an array of each constraints, or each each view probably should have its own array of constraints just so that it's you know, clear to you on which one has, you know, all the constraints. So here we go, we have now an array of, or not an array, we have a window now that has two uh, squares, and they're both constrained to where we told them to be constrained to. All right, let's do something a little more complicated here. Let's say that I wanted my left view, which is pinned to the top left currently. I want it to actually um, go to the center of the window. So now it should be from the left side to the center 
of wherever the window is currently uh, sized to. So instead of having this width anchor here, I'm going to say the left view's right anchor, and I'm going to constrain it to the view's center x anchor. So we also have the option of using the center x anchors, which are kind of nifty, because I can now say the right side of the left view should be constrained to the center of the view. And if I run this, we'll see now that the left view actually will be going all the way to the center of the view. And if I resize this, it nicely correlates to where that is. Awesome. Um, let's try a few other things here. We got um, the right view. Let's make it so that it's no longer um, in this position. Let's make it so that it's going to be in the center of the view. So we're going to leave the width and height constraints on there for this one, but we're going to change it so that the center, uh, or basically the, the center of the right view, will be constrained to the center of the view. I can simply change this to be the center x anchor for the right view, and I could say that the windows view should also be constrained to the center x anchor. Likewise, I can do the same for the center y anchor. And now it's basically going to constrain the right view so that it's you know, both the center of our view is attached to the center of the window. So let's try this out here. And as we can see, now I have that right view is now moved off the bottom and it's just going to follow the center of the window. Super cool. There's even more options that we can do with this. If I want, I could say that I'm going to have an offset for the anchors. So if I want to say constraint equal to, there's also another option to pass in a constant and the constant will offset um, the location that you're currently at. So let's say I have this constraint equal to this anchor. Um, I want it to be 50 pixels offset from the center. And to do that, I could simply say view.center x. And the constant is just the offset that I want to make. And I'm going to make it an offset of 50 in my case. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see now that the right view has now been offset by 50 pixels to the right still center aligned, but it's just, you can see now it's offset. It's not actually uh, aligned to the center of the window. So super cool. Um, let's do one more thing that I think uh, will help round this out and then we'll call it a day. Um, the left, let's say that the, I don't want the left view to be any less than, um, let's say 200 pixels or 200 points. So um, no matter what, the left view should never be compressed any less than this. So currently, if I run this, let's just make a little comparison here so that you know the difference. If I go like this, you'll notice I can squish this view right to basically where it's, you know, I think this is the Windows constraints at this point, right? So I can squish the view basically as small as I want, and these views will squish accordingly. But let's say that I want the left view, and I want its... Um, I want the actual width of the left view to never be any less than say 150 points. So I could say left view width anchor dot constraint. And there's a whole slew of options that we have here as well. We can have constraint greater than or equal to anchor. And there's a bunch of other um, options that we have with this as well. Um, what I'm just gonna do is simply say that I want the constraint greater than this particular constant. All right, so because it's a dimension, I can actually use this as well. I can say constraint greater than or equal to constant. This means I need this width anchor to never be any smaller than 150 points. So if I run this now, we can see that I won't be able to compress the window any smaller than 150 points. So here we go. We can see that the window doesn't collapse completely anymore. I need to, com I need to keep the constraint that says the widths, width of the left view needs to be at least 150 pixels or greater, and or points. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show for this particular tutorial. If you have any other questions on auto layout in general, um, there's tons of changes that have been made in El Capitan and likewise in iOS. All this stuff works on both iOS 9 and El Capitan, so if you're interested in using them on either platform, go for it. But that's pretty much all I have, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.